it's 6 a.m. I need to get up and get ready for work. Yeah. Showered now. What I'm gonna do is go downstairs, grab a coffee, and probably read some of my book. And look who's joined me. Good morning. How are you? Original plan was to sit outside and read, but it's just everything's just wet. Um, it's covered in like a layer of damp because of how the weather is. Even though it's really sunny outside, I think it was raining most of the night. Um, so I'm not going to sit outside and read. I'm going to sit in the living room and read. Just applied grease lightning. Um, I'm still using this, by the way. I'm noticing a difference on the spots I apply it to, just not to my spots in general because I'm getting a lot of them. So it's because I, I don't know. I, Apparently it could be because of the weather change. I'm still not eating great, so I, I'm, I'm just going to assume that's it. Um, but yeah, it is 25 past seven now, and I need to be work at eight. So we're probably going to leave it. It's looking beautiful outside. Bye, Sienna. Bye. Bye, Here are you. Bye. Do you have work? No, I'm just awake at this time for the reason. See ya. Look, everything is drenched. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. Just got back from work, um, devoured my food. It was a, it was an okay shift. It didn't go super slow, but it weren't super quick either. Um, but now what I'm gonna do, that was probably really loud and for that I am sorry, but I'm gonna go get in the shower. Are you ready? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna work at all, but there we go, dressed, done. This was my plan for today. Wake up at 6 a.m., check. Work eight till four, check. Home shower, eat, check. Workout day one chest, that's not going to happen, and plan a normal day for June. Let's do that one. This is a piece of paper. I'm going to turn this into some sort of timeline to explain what it is I plan to do. So, um, yeah, I have turned these margins into times, 1am, 2am, 3am, so on, all the way to 12am. Now, what I'm going to do in here is fill out what I plan to do in each one of these. Cool, so that's my plan. I want to stream six times a week, work out seven time, six times a week, and vlog seven times a week. 1am, I plan to be sleeping. Okay, so at 6am, I plan to wake up. I want to wake up at 6, but not be out of bed by 6. So wake up, read videos procrastinate 7 a.m i want to work out that shouldn't take really much longer than an hour 8 a.m i should be showered 9 a.m and i'd say 3 p.m this is time to get vlog footage and then from 4 p.m until around 9 p.m that's going to be stream between 10 a.m and 12 a.m edit um and upload vlog just made some changes so it's actually going to be six hours of sleep seven hours of vlog time five uh, six hours of stream time and two hours of edit time that should be more than enough and that's going to be one of the typical days of my six days um so like my six days of working out streaming and vlogging and on my days where i'm not vlogging and streaming i will literally probably just sort of get roughly lie until around nine so skip all that sort of stuff or maybe eight uh wake up at eight and then just do everything but stream and work out and that sort of stuff that's literally it um so that's my plan now i know that was like the messiest thing ever i did have a really cool plan to do um like with the posting notes and stuff and really make it look good but it didn't work out the way i wanted it to at all so i'm i'm stuck with that and also everyone was walking back like in and out of rooms outside and turn on and off hoovers so if that whole thing seemed really disconnected i'm really sorry um but i think you get the gist of what my plan is and on thursday I think I'm going to go to Warwick Castle um, with Asia and her family. 
Um, so that's going to be really, really fun. Um, get to go get a load of footage from there. It'll probably mostly be time lapse footage because it's a great place, like it's nice high up and stuff. Um, but there will be some proper footage. That's if they allow you to record. A lot of these places don't, which is fucking weird. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> been sitting here for a while now just watching a lot of videos um, about watches I am literally hooked again um, I just got out my Seiko and like charged it up it's uh, it's automatic so it's charged by movement but this is my Seiko if only you could hear this like this click um, or the tick that it does it's just so beautiful I bought a watch um, I was hanging around on eBay and this citizen came up and I've been looking for a watch um, this citizen watch for a while it's called the um, the Eagle 7 I think it's called something like that and it, it went for nine pounds 38 P with two pounds 99 delivery like superly cheap and these used to go for like um, for like i don't know i used to see them go for like 30 pounds and here here it is like it's such a really nice clean simple watch it's a vintage watch uh from like the 80s 90s era it's not really that vintage but it's very very similar to this watch that i've got right now it, in how in-house made movement um it's just a really really nice watch a really nice elegant simple watch just done some uh, digging around and i found out through the serial numbers and stuff on the back that this was produced in October 1974 so that means this watch is nearly 46 years old and it still runs perfectly so I thought I'd try and explain my obsession with watches the best I can it's difficult to explain why I have an obsession for watches and right here's only three three watches which is more than you need <laughs> I have had in my life probably like 10 different watches these are like my main modern watches the these two right here the rest i've owned have all been vintage um you know like early all below the 80s uh, you know i owned a old seconda i've owned i think three accurus altogether like vintage accurus um, most of which i've obviously sold on the way watches are made is it is fascinating so you have you have two different kinds of watches you've got like quartz quartz movement quartz is battery like this is battery powered you see that tick it's like like this runs off a battery which has to be changed whenever it runs out this doesn't run off a battery, it runs off a a uh, weight like coil in the middle, whatever you call it, and it spins around, it charges it with movement. You can get the ones as well which have the crown, which you spin the crown and it like spins up the coil and that releases the charge. They're, they're two different types, but they're automatic. What that means is you never have to replace a battery in this thing, it just keeps going and going and going with movement which is absolutely fascinating and that's how watches were intended to be made. Quartz came around because it was cheaper to create and it was more accurate. You will have better luck with this quartz watch, like time wise, than you ever will with this watch because quartz is just accurate. But there's something about the watchmaking process which is just fascinating. The, the amount of pieces that go into a watch and how it tells the time and just the way it ticks and it's just, it's fascinating to me. And not only that, they're, they're really, really amazing to look at. Like this, this piece is 46 years old. Like, just think of that. This thing that I'm holding in my hand that I can put on my wrist is 46 years old. This is a piece that I bought online. This could have any kind of story. And what I remember the description saying was that this watch came with a person from Australia. They lived in Australia and they actually bought it from Japan. Apparently they bought it from Japan, like when they went over to Japan in like the 80s and they bought it off some like seller who was on the street just selling his watch. And they bought it off them and he moved to Australia and he lived there and then he moved over to the UK or something and he was selling it online. Now that could be total bullshit obviously, but it's just fascinating to know that this could have travelled more than I've travelled in my life and it's still here running perfectly fine. You know, you can get open back watches, um, even open front watches where you can see the movement go like and work and it's just beautiful. I started proper looking into it and really getting into watches. My dad always owned a Citizen anyway, like he owned he owned a really, well, in my opinion, a really nice watch. Um, it was like a titanium, I think it was titanium. Dad let us know down in the comments, I cannot remember, and it was just a really nice high quality watch. From then I've just sort of liked watches, but it wasn't like I knew about watches, I didn't have a clue. Like I just, 
I was that guy buying two pound watches off eBay, you know, them really crappy ones. Like I was happy with that because it worked. And then when I started really looking into it, I started realizing the beauty of watches and what it really means. And I really found these these brands like Hamilton, Oris, Orient, um, Seiko. Um, I don't know. I love the story behind it. I love the story behind these, especially Accurus. Like this has such a great story behind it. You know, on the back right here, let me show you. Right here, I don't know if you can see that. It says true British designs. This watch has been around since I think the 50s or maybe even 40s. And it was like the creator of let me find out. Since 1946, that's when it was founded. So there's a very common movement called the 21 Jewel. Now, if I remember correctly, yes, this Seiko 5 is a 21 Jewel movement. Um, Accurus were the first company apparently to actively promote the 21 Jewel lever movement, and Accurus 21 Jewels became the company slogan set in a standard in watches that was later followed by many of the competition. In April 1997, so the year I was born, Accurus started the official countdown to the millennium by providing the old Royal Observatory of Greenwich uh, with a satellite controlled clock accurate to within one to one hundredth, one ten millionth of a second to count down the last thousand days of the 20th century. But I bought it because it's a Seiko 5, the name, the history behind it, and it's just a beautiful timepiece, like something that one day I could potentially pass on to my kids, and although it will probably have no value, even though I believe these are going to go up in value because of how reliable they are and they're just a great vintage watch but it's just cool to know that this has been around for 46 years already now imagine how reliable this is at 46 years just imagine how it's going to be in like 80 years my current collection which is going to be having a citizen um eagle 7 as i've said like this collection right here is a reflection of my my stature at the moment you know what i mean like i don't have a lot of money to spend on watches and this this reflects that but it's still they still all have meaning and that's the important thing with collecting and collecting anything really like my blu-rays and funko pops they're a bit different they're more like modern day collections i'd like to call them whereas watches are just something that i think i'm never gonna grow out of like blu-rays and funko pops i think eventually i might just stop it would be one of those things where one day I wake up and just go, I don't want to buy anymore. And it's been like that for the past like year. I've not bought any Blu-rays or Funko Pops, but I love them to bits and I would like to buy more if I had the money. But one thing that I'm always probably going to keep and keep collecting over years and years will be watches. So look into it if you're interested. If not, I'm sorry for just talking your ear off about watches for that amount of time. God, that was long. That's nearly like 10 minutes. I'm going to have to edit that down. Okay, because I just ranted on about watches for a while, Probably gonna call it a day, so um, hope you enjoyed. Okay, right there, which you probably really can't see, is 1 a.m. till midday. Okay, that's not gonna work.